Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna do a follow-up to a video we did last night. That was quick, and, and we actually recommended that they do this, but that uh, I don't think George Clooney is spending money based on what we said. Mm -hmm. Apparently, some of Hollywood's A-listers are getting together and kicking in $150 million to over basically- Over three years. Over three years uh, to help end this strike stalemate. Because How is that gonna end the stalemate though? Well, considering that the union wants, depending on who you ask, 500 million or 800 million dollars, 150 million dollars over the course of three years isn't really gonna sounds to me like the they're gonna be like, Hey, we'll take that too, and we still want the other money as well. That's probably what's gonna happen. How generous of you, that's probably what's gonna happen. That tells you though how desperate they are to end this thing. And again, the A listers are probably fine. I'm sure most of them are very cushy. A lot of them, George Clooney, I'm sure he does not have to work. A lot anymore. of them have other, you know, businesses and companies and stuff too. Right, right. And he's uh, pimping. Was he pimping coffee? Nes Nespresso. He Nespresso. was. I don't know if he still is. Um, anyway, yeah, so, well, I haven't read this yet, so we'll see what's going yeah, on. Yeah, so we're gonna talk. This just happened. This just happened like this morning, and that must have been what the talks were about. They were having the talks. Uh, I, I thought they went in there just to slap. Fran Drescher, but <laughs> it might have gone like this. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, check out Shadowbinders Volume 3. We're funding on shopclownfish.com, not on Indiegogo. We did a video about it. You can go out and see why. Um, yeah, so we're bringing Shadowbinders back. First new Shadowbinders content in 10 years. You can also get books one and two. Again, we have a limited supply of those books. It's a hardcover, a graphic novel, a full color. So nice stuff. Uh, go out to shopclownfish.com. Uh, ironic that George Clooney is the one to uh, make you know, do the uh, negotiations with the studios because I, I made the uh, joke before about his role in Hail Caesar. Mm -hmm. That he was going that on about funny. that he was going on about socialism and stuff, and they basically Josh Brolin's character, who worked for the studios, slapped the crap out of him and said, "Studio has been good to you. Get back to work. Yeah, Shut that, your that mouth." That's funny. I didn't even catch that. But and yes. uh, this is this is the guy who's basically like, "Oh, I'll give you some money. Just end the strikes," you know. So uh, coming from Deadline, breaking news: Hollywood's biggest stars offer to kick in 150 million over three years in dues. To help end the actor strike stalemate. That is, that's kind of a bribe. Isn't it? Like, hey, hey, if you'll leave my friends alone, uh, uh, we'll give you some money. I don't know. I want to uh, see what it's about because I'm not understanding it. I don't understand how you think this is going to do anything. I, I don't think that's enough money to even make a dent. Um, over, uh, let's see, over their Zoom call on Tuesday, they had a meeting. They tried to figure out how to end the actor strike that will stretch beyond 100 days. A group of Hollywood's biggest stars uh, laid out to SAG after leaders a groundbreaking proposal that amounts to the town's biggest earners defraying the cost to amp tip signatories by eliminating the cap on membership dues to be okay to be used to bolster health benefits in other areas that SAG after is trying to shore up. The offer would remove the million dollar cap on membership dues. Hmm. In an effort to bring a residual system to streaming. The stars have also proposed a formula that would make the lowest names on the call sheet who need the money the most to be the first to be paid. Okay, that's interesting. We actually said yesterday, so if you guys are so concerned, yep. you, you A-listers are so concerned about your fellow actors and your below the line workers, all that, you get, but one, you gotta do what you gotta do to get this thing put to bed. And two, you guys could pony up the money. And by God, it sounds like they're trying to do something. Well, it's interesting to me because they're talking about that there was a million dollar cap on what they could charge actors and stuff for the yeah. views. If they eliminate that cap, my next thing is how long is that going to, you know, is that good? Are they going to put the cap back on eventually? I don't think they will. So if we're understanding this correctly, what the, the cap would be the membership dues. So that's their fee, like the fees they have to pay their portion. Yeah. Like the percentage or whatever. Their so percentage. like big actors that get, do like a lot of movies the way it sounds to me is that usually there's a cap. They can't take any more percentage than, ten, than a million from them. Okay. So they take that cap away, then does that mean that they can take a lot more from these actors? Probably. So that means like you have somebody like, you know, Johnny Depp in his prime who is getting like $25, $50 million a picture, you know, he'd be capped at like a million bucks. So he They couldn't have more than that. Right. But now if they take the cap off, they can. They could. So is that gonna de incentivize A listers from doing too much work? I, I don't know. Cause it might be like, oh my God, well, I'm gonna have to pay in dues. 
I don't know. This is this is interesting. So they're basically saying like we we will we will give up more of our income to make sure that these people you know get, get to work and we're going to make sure they get paid first, which I think is actually that's actually kind of cool. I mean, I'm going to be honest, if you're mm-hmm. making that much money and you've got people out there busting tables making $26,000 a year or less or whatever it is and these people are being hurt and you're like, "Well, I got like freaking 100 million dollars just sitting in a bank account." You know, you should probably should pay those people right. first. I mean, I mean, it's not their job to, but it's they not their job should. to. So, what are they trying to do? Like, hoping that if they offer that, then that they'll settle for less with the AMP tip. Is that what they're hoping for? I think so. Okay. Um, but that's kind of, you know, how sad is that, though, that these guys and gals have to basically give up more of their income just to get, because again, the understanding, and there's, there's another, there's another side to the story here. Um, but the understanding so far from the media has been that the studios walked out because they got blindsided with this dollar, you know, levy request. But then these guys are like, yeah, we'll just give up a big, a bigger portion of our oh. income to, you know, to put this thing to bed. So they said a lot of top earners are trying to be part of the solution to trying to solve it. Um, they said we've offered to remove the cap on dues, which would bring over 50 million to the union annually. So yes, yeah, so they remove the cap, they pay more. Well over $150 million over the next three years. We think it's just fair for us to pay more in the union. We also are suggesting a bottom-up re- residual structure. I mean, the top of the call sheet would be the last to collect residuals, not the first. These negotiations will be ongoing, but we wanted to show that we're all in this together and find a way to close the, uh, the gap on actors getting paid. I do. I mean, I think that's cool. We said this. Like, if you guys you put your money where your mouth is, and they are. So full credit to them because they're willing to take give up their money to save these people. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, I, I, that's, I respect that. I mean, I don't like always A-lister actors. A lot of times, they're kind of selfish, self-centered assholes. But I think that that's pretty cool that they're doing that. But it, but the question is, well, will the union agree to that, or they still demand take that and then demand more from, will, uh, from Amp Tip? Will it be abused too? I have to wonder. You know, uh, I don't know. Or is what what's going to happen is like, oh, okay, now all of a sudden, all these actors' fees just went up considerably because you know now they got to pay more and. Union dues. I don't know. And, uh, I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. But I just think, you know, it's cool that they're actually trying to come in and do something to stop it because it's hurting so many people. Yeah. What? So it's admirable to want to help, says Anonymous, but more dues don't resolve the residuals problem. It's not clear that any of the money would be reallocated to membership in any direct way. Um, yeah, exactly what we said. We're not saying where's the money going when they were demanding this, like, you know, levy. They weren't saying where the money was going. Yeah, I think I think what they need to do is if that money is earmarked, regardless of where it comes from, the way to do it would be like it goes into a fund, and then like you said, we vote on it or we whatever, you know. And it, it, there's transparency. Well, they we said up here, they, their comment like even if it would, the 500 million Fran and Duncan demanded of the companies was not requested just because SAG needs money. It was requested because SAG wanted its members to share in the billions of dollars of revenue brought in by streaming in some direct way, but they wouldn't address. The proposal wouldn't address that. So it's not going to change anything. They're just at, tacking on another demand. Um, this person said Clooney doesn't just talk to talk. He walks the walk. He's a real deal. Uh, that actually, I, I will I will actually give him props for that. And of course, he would destroy any Republican candidate. <laughs> What's that have to do with anything? Here's a, here's, a, here's a shocker for you. I bet you money some of these actors are Republicans. Oh, mind blown. I think the ones that are good with money have conservative issues. Leanings, it yes. just blows my mind. Like, these people just literally think that I, I can't even. It's just mm. this is stupid. Dues cannot be used to pay other members or shore up the health plan. Legally, dues can only be used to fund union operations. Dues well, that are, could be. Dues are assessed on members' earnings. They are not a contribution from the studios. I admire and respect Clooney, but this is ignorant. Closed minded says, start thinking outside the box. You guys want to change the business, so maybe look at changing it on your union end as well. Okay, this is probably somebody from the studio side. If removing a dues cap generates more money, why can't it be allocated as SAG sees fit? You guys want to allocate the proposed revenue share in any way you like, so why not this? I pers- like basically you the revenue share, but you can do what you want with it. Why can't you? Yeah, but there might legally be reasons why they can't. I don't know. Was George Clooney wearing his nipple suit when he proposed that would be the Batman nipple suit? He might be a real superhero after all. I thought they were going to dunk on his uh, dunk his on nipples? his nipple suit. Um, it's not how it works. You need to be making $63 million or more for the removal of the cap to affect you at all. Some of these people probably are. But that's what they're saying. Like those people, those people would generate about $50 million extra. And they're saying they would be willing to do it. They're already making $63 million plus. 
then they're probably like, what's that's not very much. We have to pay extra. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not how it works for most people, but for these people, apparently it will. Well, that's, I think, why they had them come in because they're like, you guys are the million dollar cap, you know, your ScarJo's and your George Clooney's and, you know, whatever. Um, IATSE, yeah, IATSE trading water. Again, they're eating each other now. I think it's going to be really awkward going back to work. Uh, think about how tone deaf that is when the below the line workers that have to afford a mortgage on a only $100,000 a year. Well, in LA, that's not very much. Uh, even after an agent and manager, it's still quite a good amount of money to live on. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I don't know. that this is, uh, this is an ongoing discussion. The fact that some actors are willing to give up their own money to end it. But it is an interesting point that people are making is like, can they legally do that though? And that's another not question to. entirely. I can't speak to that because I'm not it might privy get, to the details of the, of the union contracts. They probably... They could probably set up some sort of organization or something. Just be like, we're going to dump it into an... I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, they want it coming from the studios. They want it coming from the studios, not from the actors. That's great. We'll take that money too. And then we still want the money from the studios. That's what I think is going to happen. Uh, that's what I think is going to happen here. And ironically, I'm, I'm going to mention this. We're not going to do a whole video about it. <laughs> this is um, funny, actually. We'll mention this. So, yeah. So, they get the writer's strike put to bed, right? And the, la the late show comes back. Uh, all the... Talk shows are coming back. Well, oh, ex yay. except for Colbert. Colbert uh, has has the coof again after uh, many, many, many boostings and after uh, doing that song and dance skit. Uh, yes, he is sick. He's out this week. So it didn't... yeah, I mean, didn't that stop it? I Gosh, mean, it's supposed to. <laughs> it's supposed to stop it. Oh my God. Anyway, um, so. This is coming from SAG After Sight. So there's still a lot of animosity here. They said that Ted Sarandos from Netflix is all spin. The other CEOs are irresponsible for abandoning the talks. Now, I heard it was David Zaslav just decided he was uh, I don't know, wasn't over there. it. Um, so again, come from Deadline. Everybody, like Deadline is all over this. Variety is all over this because they're like, what the hell are we going to talk about if there are no more movies and there are no more TV shows? What are we going to talk about? Oh, my God. Guys, you need to end the strike so we can stay in business because we got to have juicy, juicy Hollywood gossip. Uh, we got to use uh, use our rag to promote whatever movie or studio or production company nobody gives a shit about. Uh, Sarandos may have insisted today that he and other studio CEOs want to end the strike. Um, but Duncan Crabtree Ireland, DCI, said, uh, no, that's not the case. He said, talk about putting people back to work while refusing to negotiate is just spin. I wish he had hyphened his name Ireland Crabtree because then I could call him Dick. <laughs> anyway. Dick. 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 Um, yeah, so it's just spin. It's just spin. Um, Sarandos today said, after an optimistic start to talks, a subscriber levy unrelated to viewing or success suggested by SAG after broke our momentum. They said, that's bullshit. That is Bullshit. They said the uh, same failed strategy they tried to inflict on the WGA to kneecap the talks. Basically, is go out and uh, talk to the media, talk to the press, tell them that we're being unreasonable. But in this case, mm, I don't know. If they were blindsided with it and you had a deal, pretty much, you know, I, I, I think that they might actually have you. They might actually have you. Um, the best way to reach a deal and end this strike is for him and the other CEOs to end their walkout from the bargaining table and resume negotiations. We've been and remain ready to continue talks every day, as long as you give us what we want. Basically. As long as you give us what we want. It's irresponsible for the companies to continue to well, refuse to negotiate. negotiate. They had negotiated, they got the stuff set up and then it was like, but we want more. You know, it's like, how, I mean, that's not how negotiation works. I can't understand why these people no. don't understand negotiation. Negotiation is give and take, not you just get everything. Yeah, and that was the thing with the writers, too. The reason it lasted as long as it did was they were adamant they were getting that writer's room. You know, we were going to have 20 people in the writer's room, even if it didn't make sense. And, uh, you know, they just did not want to give up anything. And if they got more than what I think they should have gotten, but I think it's going to be a double-edged sword because what's going to happen is the studios are going to be like, fine, fine, we're just not going to have as many shows. That's mm -hmm. how we're going to keep our costs down because most of the stuff you guys are producing – doesn't make us any money anyway. So, you know, if we have half as many shows, oh, well, we're probably saving money because half those shows were going to be garbage anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.